Hey everyone, Jim here, and in this video, we're gonna go over Kali Linux. Uh, this video is intended for anybody that is uh, new to cybersecurity that wants to learn about Kali, that wants to get the basics out of it. Uh, this is gonna be a brief video, and I hope to do more additional Kali videos uh, in the future. Uh, so in this video, I am gonna be using a virtual box to run Kali Linux in a virtual machine. Uh, if you don't already know how to set up virtual machines, uh, I do have a couple other videos uh, linked in my uh, YouTube channel. One is for uh, VirtualBox and another one is for VMware Workstation. I actually prefer VMware Workstation just a little bit more, but VirtualBox is free. Um, so we're going to use that because it's more accessible. So Kali Linux. This is a really common tool that is used by cybersecurity professionals. It's a Linux distribution that has tons and tons of cybersecurity tools built into it. Uh, it saves a lot of time because you don't have to go download and manually install tons of individual things. Uh, and it's just super convenient because you can just pull down a copy and quickly set up a virtual machine. You can also install Kali Linux directly onto a laptop or a desktop computer if you wanted to. Uh, although, at least from what I've heard, the recommendation is generally not to do that. Um, this, this operating system is a really good OS, but it's not really um, meant to be like a daily driver. Uh, something that you would install like uh, Office onto and use like you know various productivity tools. It's more as like a, a more of like a cybersecurity toolkit. That being said, if you do want to run uh, Kali Linux on metal and you want to run it full time for your main main rig, uh, your main computer, um, that's fine. And you of course can try to do that. So to download Kali, uh, you just go to the Kali website and click download. Uh, there's two options. Bare metal refers to installing it directly onto a computer, so installing it directly onto a laptop or desktop computer with no other operating system installed. Virtual machines means you are going to be installing Kali Linux on top of an existing operating system and running it virtually, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So I can click on virtual machines, and then we have some options. We have VMware Workstation and VirtualBox. So maybe you're thinking, well, I want to use Hyper-V or KVM or some other uh, less popular virtualization product. Can you still do that? And the answer is yes. If you don't want to use VMware Workstation or VirtualBox, um, you can run Kali Linux on really, really within any virtualization product. To do that, you just go back up to the download page and instead say click bare metal. This will allow you to download the ISO file so you can install it on really anything. That being said, installing Kali Linux via the ISO file is a little bit more technical and hands-on than just downloading the pre-built virtual machine package. So to make things easy for uh, newer users, we are going to go with the, the package adoption, the, the virtual machine uh, direct download. So I'm using VirtualBox, so I'm gonna click this, this little download link right here, the down arrow, and that'll download it directly off of the Kali Linux website. Now the speed at which this takes is gonna to be totally dependent on the speed of your internet connection. So if you have a really slow internet connection, uh, this is gonna take some time and it's about three and a half gigabytes. Uh, that being said, my internet connection is pretty fast and fortunately, at least right now, it seems like the Kali Linux servers are being pretty quick as well. So it's just about done being downloaded. So I already have a virtual box open. So what I'm going to first do is I'm just going to move this file onto my desktop so it's easier for us to locate. As you can see, by default, it's just in my, uh, my downloads. Let's put that in my desktop. Drop it over there. And now we can go into VirtualBox and we can import that virtual machine that we had just downloaded. So under File, I'm going to select Import Appliance. I'm then going to browse for that uh, virtualbox.ova file that was downloaded. And let me move this a little bit smaller if I can. I can't make this window any smaller, unfortunately. But okay, so I selected it and I'm gonna click next. I'm going to select next or import and agree. And it's gonna import. Now, as this process goes, I'll talk a little, little bit about some things that we're gonna to wanna to change. So when you're looking at this, this is essentially how the author of this virtual machine over at Kali Linux or Offensive Security, which is the organization that develops Kali Linux, um, had packaged up this virtual machine. And for the most part, it's in pretty good shape. It only has though two gigabytes of memory. And if you were just to launch this virtual machine after it's done importing in, uh, you're gonna notice that it runs really slow and that's going to be because of this memory issue 
In general, I would say it's better if you would allocate four or eight gigabytes of memory, kind of at a minimum. Uh, but I'm actually gonna bump this up probably to 16 because I actually have a decent amount of memory available on my uh, computer over here. So to do that, um, after the import process is complete, um, you can just go into system and you can edit it. So right click on your VM and you're gonna go into the, where to it go, into settings. And you are going to find, probably under system right here, uh, we are going to change the base amount of memory to, let's see, we'll do 16, so 16384 for my computer. Now, you just wanna make sure that you're not consuming all of your host computer's memory. Uh, my computer here has, uh, I think it's like 64 gigabytes of RAM currently installed, so that's fine for me. But if your computer currently has, let's say, 16 gigabytes of RAM installed, you wouldn't want to use 16 gigabytes with the virtual machine, otherwise you're gonna fill up the whole thing. Uh, so take a look at your, your host computer's memory first, understand how much RAM to allocate. And if you're not sure how to do that, again, highly recommend taking a look at my virtual machine videos that I already have posted to my YouTube channel. Great, okay. So that's pretty much the only real change you want or need to make. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Uh, the other thing I'll, I'll note, I guess, is if you want to, you can change the, the processors. Um, having four is nicer, especially if you're gonna be using any, um, I guess more of like the, the heavier lifting tools within this virtual machine. Um, I'll, I'll set it to four, but otherwise you can leave it to two if you notice some slowness. Okay, so I click the start button. And Kali Linux is gonna start right up. So the really cool thing about using that uh, package that we had downloaded is that we don't have to go through the installation process. So we don't have to manually create a new virtual machine and manually install the operating system. Essentially, all we are doing right here is just downloading a pre-configured operating system and opening it. So we are saving a lot of time. Now, some of the downsides is, while we can like change the amount of memory and processing cores, we can't do things like easily expand or shrink the hard disk. That's kind of at a fixed size. So I would say it'd be worth considering going with the ISO route, the bare metal route to create a virtual machine. Uh, if you need to change the disk size, I'd recommend, you know, in that case, then use the ISO. Just be aware it's gonna be more technical. Um, later on, eventually, I might do another video of the advanced Kali Linux installer. Um, where I can show you how to do that. But otherwise, I think for most of you, this one will be just fine. <clears throat> so when you first boot up your pre-configured Kali Linux VM, uh, it's gonna come to this login page. And you might be thinking, well, what is the username and password? And if you, if you, if you forget, um, just remember, look at the website. Um, it'll say right here in bold, uh, the username and password is Kali. So keep that in mind. And it's the same whether you do this for VM or workstation or virtual box. So I'm gonna log in, username Kali, password Kali. And I am in. Okay, so this is Kali Linux. Um, as you can see, it looks way different than Windows. You don't have um, a start button on the lower right-hand side, sorry, lower left-hand side. Uh, the taskbar is attached to the top. Um, and the interface is just generally different, but it still kind of looks like a computer, like a desktop operating system. So for those of you that have not used Linux, Linux is quite a bit different than Windows. Uh, the way the file system works, the syntax for various command line commands, um, and everything else is pretty much different. So Linux is gonna have a learning curve, especially if you haven't used a Linux system before. Uh, and I should rephrase that, Linux is gonna have a learning curve if you haven't engaged with a, a technical Linux operating system before. Uh, most people have used Linux, whether they know it or not. Linux powers uh, a huge amount of the world's web servers. Uh, Linux powers, uh, I would say most, if not almost all of our Internet of Things devices. It's installed on cars, it's used in airplanes. Uh, Linux is used pretty much everywhere. The way that Linux works and you interact with it, typically vendors would put really nice interfaces over a Linux operating system. So if you think of something like uh, your Nest thermostat, uh, that runs Linux, they have a really nice UI or user interface that's dropped on top of it. If you think about your brand new refrigerator that has that touch screen on it, um, that's also running Linux, they just put that nice interface on top. So for those of you that want to really kind of poke around with Linux and understand how the Linux operating system works, you have to get a little bit more into the weeds. If you download a more, uh, I guess, traditionally uh, installed Linux operating system, not something that'd be like pre-installed, but something that you would install, like Ubuntu or Kali Linux or CentOS or Red Hat, the experience is gonna be much more technical. So I'll walk you through this, but just be aware there's gonna be a learning curve, but I honestly think the learning curve is worth it. 
Um, and at the end of the day, though, even if you can't master Linux or if you decide Linux isn't for you, it doesn't mean like you can't work in IT or you can't work in cybersecurity. There are tons of roles and possibilities out there for you. OK. So on the surface here, most modern desktop Linux distributions, such as Kali Linux, will have some sort of graphical side to it, some sort of graphical interface. Uh, if you download like an older version of Linux or a very scaled down version of Linux, or if you install it with a very minimal install, a lot of times when you boot it on for the first time, uh, you're just going to have a blinking cursor, kind of like we'd expect a computer to be back in the 80s. There'd be no, uh, there'd be no desktop. It'd just be blinking cursors and text on a screen. Uh, but again, thankfully, with Kali Linux and other modern Linux distributions, there are now uh, some, I guess, uh, quality of life enhancements built in, such as a GUI. Uh, so on the left-hand side at the top here, we have the, the Kali Linux start button. And it's a little bit different than Windows. It's on the top instead of the bottom. Um, but as you can see, it's still somewhat familiar. Now, applications are packaged into these different uh, categories, or I should say there are shortcuts of applications within these different categories. Uh, it goes from 0, 01 down to 42. And what these are, these are the different phases of ethical hacking. So if there's a tool that's used primarily for like information gathering, well, you probably find it under here. If you're looking for a tool that's oftentimes used for uh, web applications like Burp, you'll find it under there. And these are the most common applications you're going to find shortcuts for in the Start menu. That being said, there are a lot of applications that also aren't installed that you're going to have to manually kind of track down um, by just navigating around the file system and by reading tutorials and other things like that. I would say most of the applications that are um, linked to this start menu, um, for the most part, they are GUI applications, meaning they have a graphical user interface. So if I launch Burp Suite as an example, as you can see, there is that dialog box I could click a button on. And here's the terms. And it's like a real application that you would expect with buttons you can click on and drag around. That is how I would say maybe about a third to half of these cybersecurity applications actually work. A lot of them are command line only. So to access those applications, you have to use what's known as the terminal. A terminal is essentially a way you can access a system via a command line interface. Um, typically, within most operating systems, it's represented by the black box with the character. So in Kali Linux at the top, by default, you're going to find it pinned up here. It's labeled term Terminal Emulator. And if you highlight over it, it says use the command line. And this is how you work with command line applications through this black box. And I'm actually going to um, try to make this bigger. I'm just doing Control plus on my keyboard just so it's easier for everyone to see. And through here, you could access command line tools like Metasploit. And this is a command line tool that will shortly uh, launch itself. There it goes, starting the Metasploit console framework. And we're in the Metasploit console. So a uh, completely command line driven tool. So this is Kali Linux. I kind of showed you what some of the tools are. So how do you know like, what tools are important for you? And this is a common question I get from a lot of students. They're like, well, there's like hundreds of tools installed on here. Like, where do I even get started? And honestly, that's a really good question. And it's not really an easy question to answer. I think what you do now at this point, now that you have Kali Linux up and running, um, is up to you. I think, number one, if you don't have a lot of Linux experience, I would focus on understanding how the Linux operating system works uh, and just how to navigate around it. Learn the, the, learn the command line interface syntax and learn how Linux operating systems are put together. That's where I would start. Uh, if you already feel like you know Linux good enough, uh, then you might want to think about like, well, in terms of cybersecurity or ethical hacking, like what do you want to get better at? Do you want to do more uh, capture the flag style activities on Hack the Box? In that case, you might want to, you know, first get better at some of your information gathering. Uh, do you want to get more into like web application penetration testing? Then maybe you want to learn more about Burp Suite. So I think about what you want to learn specifically within the field and then start Googling around for guides and tutorials. And eventually you are going to find a guide or tutorial that uses Kali Linux that uses very specific tools. And after some time, you'll get more and more familiar with what tools are good for what purposes. Um, and I like to think of this as, as, as I like to think of this concept as 
having, I guess, a hacker mindset. Eventually you will get more experiences and you'll kind of know what tools to pull out of your Kali Linux tool bag, uh, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So when you're done with this, um, you can just shut it down, you can turn it off, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, I go through Kali Linux virtual machines pretty often. Um, I usually just download them, use them for a task or activity, um, and then I'll shut them down. And if I don't use it for like another week, I'll just delete it because it takes up a decent amount of space on my computer. And when I need it again, I'll just download it. It's, it's easy enough to do. Uh, so yeah, I'll wrap up this video for now. Uh, expect some other videos. I'll list them down in my uh, comment or the notes section below. Um, I'm hoping to include videos about just general VM activities, like how to use virt VMware Workstation and VirtualBox. And then um, I hope to produce some videos too that are more specifically about how to use the Linux command line and other fun stuff like that. So that's it for now, and I will talk to you later.